A lot of people have been questioning me on this thing about holding something to be provisionally true or provisionally believing something or being convinced by something but with caveats or whatever. Um, and this sort of ties into this business of um, knowledge being a subset of belief, etc., etc. Well, what does it mean to actually provisionally believe something? It means that you believe something uh, but in certain contexts and under certain circumstances and as things stand at the present moment, etc. Um, now, that's an interesting point of view and I would posit the view that almost every belief or certainty anyone ever possessed is provisional because it's all based upon um, information that we have in our brains that we use to form opinions on things to decide whether or not they're true or convincing or whatever. Well, let's say that we accept something as provisionally true. Um, we're not totally convinced, but we accept it as, for the time being, true enough to act, to quote Mr. Dillahunty. Uh, we're, we believe something is true enough to act, therefore it's provisionally true or it's true or whatever. Well, what if we believe something is provisionally false or provisionally untrue or I'm not completely convinced by that? I see where you're coming from, but I'm not convinced. That's provisional disbelief, I guess I would call that. It's not out-and-out out disbelief. It's not that's rubbish. It's just, no, I see where you're coming from, but no, it doesn't work for me. Well, okay, then we have provisional belief and provisional disbelief. Where's the tipping point? <laughs> this is where belief and disbelief start to get muddled a little bit, and this is why you can actually believe and not believe in something at the same time. Because in a certain perspective, you might believe something to be true, and then when the perspective changes, you might think that it's not true. In both cases, it might be a provisional true or a provisional not true. But again, I'm sort of not convinced that anyone actually believes anything absolutely. Um, you might sort of say in the belief system that I've put together, I assume certain things to be true. That's not what I'm asking. Do you actually believe it to be true? Do you actually know that it is a solid fact? If so, why are we arguing it? <laughs> why is it arguable even? Um, so provisional affirmation or provisional negation, I guess, um, seems to be the only way we can actually accept or reject anything, provisionally. Um, you know, the old, I'll be an atheist until God appears type thing. So that's a provisional atheism. Um, and that's more towards hard atheism, I guess, than soft atheism. Uh, but other people will say, well, I, you know, I was raised in religious tradition, therefore, you know, I think that God probably exists. I don't think about it very much, but, you know, it's the old thing about um, the, the anecdote from Tolstoy where he um, noted that one of his friends was sitting down to dinner and doing the orthodox before the meal, and he said to his friend, oh, you still do that? And that was the end of it. The guy never did it again. <laughs> it was the... the, the faith that this guy had was so weak that it just needed that someone pointing it out to him that he did it uh, to break it, to disabuse him of the habit of doing that. That's a very strongly uh, almost non-belief kind of belief. And there's tons of that around there, around here, if you ask me. Not only that, a lot of people actually, uh, to them, their own faith isn't really anything to do with whether or not God exists. It's something we you, you do in your life. And, you know, it's a sort of an anchor in your life. That's about it. <clears throat> so provisional belief and provisional disbelief are probably far more common than the absolute variants. And as I say, there is a tipping point where provisional belief becomes provisional disbelief. Where is that tipping point? It depends on the individual. So if you look at it in a, in, in a certain context, you actually can actually believe something and not believe it at the very same time, simply because both your belief and your disbelief are provisional. Uh, I could even see in cases where you swing back and forth uh, between belief and disbelief in something, if it's provisional, which in my opinion it always is. That's how I believe the human mind works. We accept things based on evidence. With new evidence, we change our position. That makes our, all of our beliefs provisional. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, okay, they say, are you an atheist or aren't you? You either are or you aren't. Where's the tipping point? What, what, what decides? You know, is it just, I, I'm an atheist? And that's all that it takes, is to, to say that that's what your position is, that's what your belief is? I don't think so. 
It's far more complex and nuanced than that. Why? Because we are far more complex and nuanced uh, than that, and our beliefs will reflect that. So, um, yes, I'm afraid I'm going to have to reiterate the same position. It is possible to believe in God and not believe in God, depending on what people mean by believe and depending on what people mean by God. Um, that's not convenient, but again, I'm just going to go back to the same thing I keep saying. Reality does not owe us convenience. 